Hello everyone, welcome back to Reading with Leanne. Today we are going to read the book The Chinese Emperor's New Clothes. Look at the cover of our book. We have the Chinese Emperor and a dragon. So this was written by Ying Cheng Kompenstein and it was illustrated by David Roberts. Let's open up this book and see what it's about. By now, you have probably heard the old folk tale about the emperor's new clothes. Two sly tailors fool a vain emperor into believing he's wearing magical clothes when in fact he is parading through the town buck naked. The truth is that story took place here in China and without any tricky tailors. Here is the real story. Look, our emperor with a, is that a praying mantis? And a mouse. So maybe you've heard the story, the emperor's new clothes. Look, let's look at the Chinese emperor's new clothes. When Ming Da was nine, he became the emperor of China. His ministers thought the boy emperor was too young to rule and took advantage of him. They stole silks to make themselves fine clothes. They stole rice from the emperor's warehouse and sold it to dishonest merchants. They robbed the royal treasury of gold and precious stones. So look, the emperor is watching as an advisor takes a bag of rice. <gasps> one is holding a piece of gold, one is holding a jewel. So because they're taking everything, they left the boy emperor with no cloth to dress the poor, no food to feed the hungry, and no money to run his kingdom. Ming Da knew that if he fired the corrupt ministers, they would rebel against him. Day and night, the boy emperor searched for a way to save his kingdom, but he couldn't think of any. Until... A month before Chinese New Year, See what's happening in this picture? The emperor looks down. Looks like there's some poor and hungry children below. Traditionally, people dress in new clothes on New Year's Day so evil spirits won't recognize them. When Ming Da's loyal tailors came with the design for his new clothes, the boy emperor was gazing out the window at the children begging on the streets. You will look magnificent in the parade, the old tailor said, holding the cloth higher. Ming Da glanced at the dragon stitched above the fluffy clouds. He wished he could dress the street children just as finely. Look at the silk dragons, right? It's very beautiful. Do you like it? asked the young tailor. Very nice, said Ming Da, staring at the crow, monkey, and rat fleeing from the dragon. Suddenly, he had an idea. My ministers are stealing from me. Will you help me out with them? Of course, said his tailors. So Ming Da told them his plan. The next day, Ming Da summoned his ministers. I want to show you the magic clothes these fine tailors made for me, he said. Magical, said the agriculture minister skeptically. <gasps> These three were the ones that were stealing, right? They were stealing rice and gold and jewels. Yes, honest people will see their true splendor, while the dishonest will only see burlap sacks, said the young tailor. Please show us, said the plump war minister. Certainly. Ming Da hopped off his throne and stepped behind a screen. The tailors helped him put on an old sack painted with ink and vegetable juices. <gasps> Ta-da! So he comes out and do you remember that rice sack we saw a little bit earlier, a few pages ago? It's like he put on whoosh, a sack of rice and all of the labels are there on him. When Ming Da stepped out, the minister stared at the boy emperor, mouths agape. Because they know he's wearing sacks, right? 
most excellent, don't you think? Ming Da spread his arms wide, feel the sleeves. He shook his arms. So uh, the ministers are a little bit nervous, right? Because if you're honest, if you're a good person, the emperor said that you would see beautiful clothing. And if you're not a good person, if you're a liar and a cheat, if you're dishonest, you're going to see sacks. So they don't want to say they see sacks. The trade minister broke into a cold sweat. He stroked the rough sack. Um, it's softer than the finest silk. The dragon's eyes are so alive, stuttered the war minister. We use the finest black silks from the South China Sea, said the young tailor. So the tailors are pretending with the emperor, right? The ministers exclaimed their approval, each louder than the last. Unbelievable, astonishing, magnificent. These tailors are at your service. Who wants magical new clothes? asked the young emperor. The ministers quickly raised their hands. Excellent. Tailors get to work, ordered Ming Da. So the tailors set up cutting tables, coffers, and trunks behind a large screen. They worked day and night. The news about the magical clothes spread like fire in the dry land. Citizens looked forward to seeing the lavish new robes at the New Year's Day parade, except the dishonest merchants. So, ooh, ah, everyone's excited for what they're going to wear. Soon came the fitting for the ministers. Ming Da skipped his daily visit to the orphanage and hid behind a screen to watch. When the trade minister entered, the young tailor held up a rice sack. See how the rubies and pearls in the crow's eyes and beak sparkle in the light? Face pale, the minister glared at the tailor. Why is there only one crow, he demanded. We ran out of jewels, said the young tailor. I will supply all the jewels you need. Just make mine more splendid than the others. He stormed out without trying on his new clothes. The war minister entered. The young tailor held up a rice sack. Don't you love the extravagant details of the clever monkey? The minister squinted his eyes at the drawing of a sly monkey stealing gold. It is unbelievable. Let me try it on. The tailors helped him into his robe and tightly wrapped a straw rope around his chubby waist. How does it fit? asked the young tailor. Can you make it bigger? The minister gasped for air and waved his arms about. Yes, but we ran out of silk, said the young tailor. I will pay with the purest gold. Just make mine more splendid than the others, he ordered. So the trade minister has a crow that is stealing a ruby. The war minister on his robe has a monkey stealing gold. Let's look at the next one. When the agriculture minister entered, the old tailor was busily trimming the bottom of the rice sack with scissors. The minister looked at it from all angles. Beads of sweat rolled down his face. See how the rat's shiny eyes look alive? Yes, it is astonishing. The minister stared at the drawing of a long whiskered rat stealing rice. The tailors helped the minister into his robe. How does it fit? asked the young tailor. The minister looked down at his bare legs. Can you make it longer? He rubbed his knobbly knees. We ran out of silk, said the young tailor. I will pay you with the best rice in the trade. Just make mine more splendid than the others, he ordered. So look at that. Actually, on all of their rice sacks, it's the animal stealing. In the days that followed, the minister delivered baskets of precious gems, gold and rice to the tailors. With the jewels and rice, Ming Da bought cloth to dress the poor. With the rice, the emperor fed them. 
Then came the morning of the New Year's Day parade. When Ming Da entered the hall in his new clothes, the ministers were loudly praising one another. Unbelievable! Exclaimed the trade minister. Astonishing! Cried the war minister. Magnificent! Shouted the agriculture minister. You all look splendid. Let the parade begin! Declared the boy emperor. Lion dancers led the way. Firecrackers popped and exploded. Martial artists punched and kicked. The aerobics jumped and tumbled. At last, the ministers came marching behind Min Da, proudly showing off their new robes. The street fell silent, and whispers spread through the crowd. Um, spectacular," said one of the dishonest merchants. Beautiful fabric," said another. Lovely design," said a third.、Mm. So everyone is watching them. The emperor with the three ministers in their rice sacks. So everyone's looking, and can you not see? They're wearing rice sacks!" shrieked a boy. The crowd roared with laughter. Ming Da smiled, and the children sang and pointed. Itchy sacks, itchy sacks. You are wearing rice sacks! Exclaimed the war minister to the other two. So are you! Cried the trade minister. We have been tricked! Shouted the agriculture minister. The ministers fled China. Ming Da replaced them with honest counselors and ruled for many years. His people were happy, well fed. And very well dressed. Now that's the real story. The emperor marched through the town to save his country. I don't know how people ended up with the old folk tale about two sly tailors fooling a vain emperor. <gasps> so look, the thieving rat, thieving monkey, and thieving crow have fled away. So if you have this book at home, or、um, you're borrowing it from the library, there's an author's note with our author Ying, a photo of her at the back. So that's a photo of Ying in China during the Cultural Revolution, and the author's note explains the inspiration behind this book. And there's also a note of how to make your own Chinese New Year parade robe. So you can even make a robe at home if you'd like. I hope you enjoyed reading this book with me. This was called *The Chinese Emperor's New Robe*, written by Ying Cheng Compostine and illustrated by David Roberts. Thank you.